this, trying to get the kitchen ready. We have drywall dust everywhere, tools, scaffolding, you name it. And that this is supposed to be a kitchen. We're getting there. All right, here we are on the second coat on the scaffolding way above the stairwell here. <laughs> and uh, she's got Finally looking like progress. Still waiting for the kitchen cabinets to come in. And of course we have to finish those. So she's getting some pictures here on the wall. And uh, we'll run here. I think you got some other ones down lower too. Everybody needs one piece of scaffolding. This thing has come in so handy. Yeah. So much better than a ladder. Yeah, it was so much safer than a ladder. Yeah. I gotta make a new picture for our youngest. Okay. Yeah, got six kids, not five, honey. <laughs> oh well. Uh, finally unpacking more. Progress, always progress. It's the little things. We're down in the uh, soon to be Wallapini section. Uh, we've got cabinets on the way and we're gonna use this as a paint booth down here. So I've got this plastic lining the entire back area here. And uh, I've got cattle panel on top so when the wind blows, it doesn't rip the plastic off. And here come the long awaited cabinets for the kitchen. And uh, it turns out we were gonna take the trailer down there, but we thought we'd just get a few pieces that come back mm -hmm. and they were palletized. So they were on two pallets and they put both pallets on the back of the truck. So I don't know if that was the safest thing to do, but they're here. So you may be wondering why we brought them down with a wallapini instead of just taking them into the kitchen. Well, in this case, we got unfinished cabinets. Why not get finished? Uh, to give you an idea though, a few years back, we renovated a kitchen in our last house. It was a fairly small kitchen, really probably the same number of cabinets as we have in this one. And we bought economy cabinets. They were made with the fiberboard sides and back. Um, and it was just your basic run of the mill oak with a basic clear stain. And the renovation cost us nearly $12,000. You know, once you get into finished cabinetry, the, the cost just skyrockets. So this time we had an even lower budget. We've had so many unexpected expenses. We just didn't have the same amount to work with. So we had to go as cheap as possible, but we looked around, we compared prices. We went to different furniture stores. We compared the way it was built. Um, and we still had to stick with an economy version, but we found a good compromise where all the sides and back are pure plywood, which is much better than fiberboard. And we were able to upgrade to hickory fronts, which kind of goes with the theme of the rest of the kitchen because we've got hickory countertops and hickory flooring going in from our lumber mill. So we wanted the hickory fronts and by doing that and getting them unfinished and finishing ourselves, we were actually able to keep the cost under $3,000. So that was a huge boost um, and really kept us under budget, which was nice. So what that means for us now though, is we have a lot of work to do. So Ruth and I are going to be essentially disassembling this stuff. Um, we've got to uh, pop all the doors off. We've got to pull the drawers out so that Sean can actually spray the entire front of the cabinet. He'll be spraying everything and then we'll reassemble it all. Hopefully we'll get this done in the next couple of days and have a kitchen very soon. So let's get busy. So we've gotten all the doors
doors off the cabinets and we brought them inside where it's a little warmer. Um, what I'm doing now is I'm going to prepare the doors to make it easier to get them sprayed. Now, normally, like with trim work and stuff, I just lay it flat. I paint one side. I wait till it dries. I flip it over. I do the other side if necessary. Um, but that, you know, causes several extra hours to, in between uh, steps. So in this case, we really want to speed this process along. So we're going to make it so that Sean can spray both sides and let them dry simultaneously. What I'm going to do is a little trick I found on YouTube a while back. I'm drilling holes with a tiny little drill bit into the edge of these doors. Um, I've already done a couple here. And this is hickory, so it's a little tougher to get through. Now, depending on whether they're upper wall cabinets or lower base cabinets will determine whether I put the holes on the top or on the bottom of the door. Basically, we just don't want them seen when it's all said and done. But tiny little drill bit, you can see this is just a teeny tiny little hook and uh, screw, and I will put it into the holes. So I'll screw these in a little more, but you can see just two little hooks there. It'll be able to hang from a string. He'll be able to spray both sides equally and not have to worry about it. So this will speed things up, hopefully, by taking a little extra time now. Just an update on our paint booth. I wanted to show that it, well, it took about two hours of work to get this all done. I got all the drawers, door fronts, I hang up there so I can do both sides. And uh, in the cabinets, I actually pulled all the rollers out where the drawers go, because those rollers, as I spray along that edge, if I get polyurethane in that little thing there, I think it's gonna gum it up and cause problems. So took those out, that'll give me a nice finish right there. And then I went ahead and put paper over the Lazy Susan in there so I don't get stuff all over the Lazy Susan. I've got my compressor right there with my gun hookup right there. And then I've got all the windows covered and the door covered. I've got a bunny suit on with my chucks. My, I, don't, I hopefully the polyurethane won't ruin my classic Converse All-Stars, but it might. And then before I put the phone away, cause I'm not gonna be able to touch anything after this, I've got black gloves, a respirator. I've got a filter. I'm going to mix uh, four parts, poly, Minwax polyurethane with uh, one part of mineral spirits to thin it out, give me a nice coat and fast drying time. But speaking of fast drying time, this little wallapini endeavor back here to try to make a paint booth has given me 82 degrees with 22% humidity. Uh, and by the way, it's 49 degrees outside. So, and I've got plenty of ventilation here too. I've, that's the outside. So. Um, it's cold right out there and it's warm and dry in here. So this should dry very quickly and I'm hoping it goes on really well because I'm obviously thinning it out. Let's see how it goes. So some of you may know polyurethane does not stick to polyurethane. So between coats, you need to rough up the first coat with a little sandpaper. Uh, scratch it up a little bit, then wipe it down, good to get all the dust off, and then apply the second coat. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going down here and every single piece, I'm scratching up a little bit with some sandpaper. And as it turns out, I had one panel that I only did one side on, so I kind of blew that one, but we'll correct it in the future. Well, we've got the cabinets finished with the spraying. They've dried. We've brought them upstairs, put them in place, and I'm starting the reassembly process. And then we'll actually do the attaching to the wall when Sean gets home. I need a little help with that project. So this will take a few minutes, but we're getting close. <laughs> Sean has made drastic strides in the kitchen today. We've gotten the doors, most of the doors on. 
What do you think? Well, had to do a little manipulation of that cabinet. Yeah. This one was, we had to trim down the edge of this one because it didn't quite fit. It was an eighth inch off because that cabinet was supposed to be 24 inches and it was 24 and a quarter. So I left myself about an eighth inch to spare there, but I didn't leave a quarter inch. So I actually had to do some trimming down there, but we got it all to fit. It's good. And I'm working on getting it set up and organized. So even though I don't have a countertop yet, there's stuff going into these. I've put shelf liners on uh, strategic places just to try to keep it clean with this family. And um, yeah, starting to fill it up with stuff. See if we can get a little organized around here. Yeah. Well, Danielle's been up late uh, organizing the kitchen or part of the kitchen that we can do right now. So we've got the cabinets in and they've got polyurethane on them, but we're missing a few things. One would be the countertops. I've got some big hickory slabs out there uh, that are drying right now and then they need to be planed and worked. So it's going to be a while before those are complete. So she took some plywood that she had downstairs for the larder and she actually put this self-adhesive shelf paper on there. So that'll protect it from stains and spills. It's easier to clean, easier to wipe with a sponge instead of plywood. So that'll be temporary. Another thing she did is down here, this she saw online, we left a gap between these uh, cabinets here. We're gonna put a little hickory door there. And this is a place we can store the step stool. For those of you who are tall, it's not a big deal. For us who are a little bit shorter, it's a big deal to have a step stool in the kitchen so you can get the upper cabinets easier. So she did that. We do have a few countertops left over from the barn. I used one on the corner there. She's got the spice racks up in the corner, which are very nice. And you notice there's no sink. Well, there actually is. It's underneath here, but since I have a lot more work to do to do the countertops, it's an under countertop sink. So I've got to put the countertops and the sink in at the same time. So right now, we just covered it to give more uh, space to work on. And as you can see, Ruth is breaking it in now. She's doing a great job. And I think as soon as we get these tools out of here and start getting all the dishes inside there, it'll be more of a functional kitchen, even though we've still got to wash our dishes over in the laundry room. Well, we're so excited that things are finally coming together. Boy, this kitchen has been a long-awaited project, something I really wanted to get done. Um, and we still have a ways to go, obviously. Uh, we've got that wood drying outside. But um, things are starting to get organized. We're showing progress. And the spice rack is up and running. Now, I am going to say uh, the spice rack, I am going to include links in the description below in our Amazon storefront as well as some of the other organizing uh, little tricks and, and secrets that I'm going to be using. We'll also be doing some videos on those coming up, so make sure you subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss those. And leave us a comment. We love to read them. See you next time.